This is going to be topic 37, genital urinary and renal. Key concepts. Upon completion of this chapter, you will understand the knowledge that injury, infection, or failure of the kidney as a core organ will affect multiple organ systems. Identification of pain, nausea, fever, or changes in condition or amount of urine as key signs and symptoms of acute kidney condition. The recognition that the loss of kidney function will lead to death unless dialysis or a kidney transplant is available. Uh, chief concern. This is figure 21.1 of hematuria. And hematuria is the appearance of frank blood in the patient's urine. Uh, occult blood is blood that is not visibly found. So if we're looking for occult blood, sometimes there's a blood positive in urine, but it isn't until we actually have a uh, test strip that will sh that will actually look for um, non-visible blood. And this is table 21.1, the possible causes of hematuria. Acute glomerular nephritis, which is kidney infection. The kidney itself is infected. Bladder cancer, calculi or kidney stones. Cystitis or urinary tract infection. Drugs like anticoagulants, aspirin toxicity, or chemo drugs. Uh, like cyclophosphamide, uh, penicillin and rifampin can also cause uh, hematuria. Uh, kidney stone generally form a result of uh, supersaturation of the urine, uh, and it's an infectious foci. Uh, considerations. Calculi is the most common. Uh, calcium stone made of either calcium oxalate or calcium phosphate caused by several medical conditions. Uh, chronic inflammatory bowel syndromes can cause this. Uh, intestinal bypass surgery can cause this. Factors favoring kidney stone formation include diets high in salt and protein and low citrate, citrate levels. Uh, types of kidney stones, there are several types here. Uh, struvite being one of them. Uh, chemicals such as magnesium, ammonium, phosphate, form around a bacteria acting as a focus uh, and form an infective infection stone. Staghorn stones are large struvite stones, so they're much larger. Uh, same version though. Um, cysteine stones result from an autosomal recessive disorder, which leads to an inborn error of metabolism. Xanthane stone, hereditary xanthane oxidase deficiency causes the nitrogen compound xanthane to form a stone. Kidney stone epidemiology. Males in the United States have a one in eight chance of developing a kidney stone. Kidney stones can threaten the kidney's viability. Uh, pain associated with a stone may arguably be the most painful condition the patient has ever experienced. Um, renal colic, constant pressure that builds up until it becomes severe unremitting pain. Uh, focus of medical care is to facilitate the passage of the kidney stone with the least amount of pain as possible. And we do this with analgesics, um, pretty much as the cornerstone of the care, and opiates remain the drug of choice for pain management. And figure 21.2 is a kidney stone. So that's this right here. And these little stones form, and as they're passed in the ureter, they kind of lodge. Um, this is what is extremely painful, uh, as it is stretching and moving through the ureter. Most of the time, there's lots of room in the bladder, and they'll be expelled out. So uh, long story short, the movement of the actual kidney stone is what is the most painful. Urinary tract infection caused by bacteria, yeast, and virus. Uh, considerations. Erysera coli uh, causes uh, the majority of the bacterial urinary tract infections. Uh, elevators of incident, short urethra, low pH of your urine, less than 5.6, and indwelling catheters can increase the frequency of this. Uh, signs and symptoms, bladder fullness, lower abdominal discomfort. Condition progresses and the patient begins to experience classic triad of symptoms, frequency, urgency, and painful urination or dysuria. Cystitis is an infection. The infection develops and ascends into the bladder. And then we can also accidentally get pyelonephritis from this, which is um, the infection still goes further and infects the kidney. Bladder cancer. Considerations. First sign 
is gross painless hematuria, so very frank blood in the urine. Fourth most common cause of cancer in men. Symptoms of uh, frequent and painful urination and gross hematuria. Glomerular disease. About one in uh, about one million glomeruli make up the bulk of the kidney. Considerations on the glomerular glomerular disease are glomerular process filtrate rate, which is the me measure of the kidney's health, which is glomerular filtration rate, or GFR, you may hear it referred to as, uh, creatinine level, and the creatinine we have a constant clearance, so it's a crude measurement of the glomerular filtration rate, and we kind of expel this stuff, uh, creatinine, all the time. Glomerular sclerosis, scarring or hardening of the arteries within the glomeruli, glomerular nephritis, inflammation of the blood vessels within the glomerular process in the kidney, and then uh, good pasture syndrome, autoimmune disease, which attacks the kidneys and causes blood to pass through the glomerular process into the urine, causing hematuria. Renal failure uh, occurs in degrees along the continuum, so we can have all phases of renal failure. Considerations. Common cause is hypoperfusion or low perfusion. Uh, intrarenal cause of acute renal failure include both primary glomerular nephritis, and this would be an example of this would be from um, lupus or systemic lupus erythematosus, and this would be caused from all the inflammation that it, it causes. And secondary glomerular nephritis, and this would be due to an infection. Signs and symptoms. Oliguria, which is a decrease in urinary output. And you might want to put this to memory because we'll talk about it again. 30 mils of urine per hour is how much a person should make, or an adult should make. Uh, anuria, another term here, uh, complete cessation of urinary output, no urine. And ascara, body starts to retain fluids and manifests by generalized body edema, seen in the abdomen, ankles, hands, and face toxic levels of urea in the blood. All of those should be considerations. As far as impacts go, kidney stops producing the hormone erythropoietin or EPO. Um, body's blood acid levels start to rise as metabolic acids accumulate and hyperkalemia. Um, hyperkalemia or high potassium levels greater than eight are cardiac effective. So they can put our patients into PEA, uh, assist the lead, widen out the QRS greatly. So we should watch for cardiac changes at the point that they're greater than, than eight. And some patients even before. End-stage renal disease. 85% or more of kidney function is lost in end-stage renal disease. Kidneys no longer have the ability to filter waste. Considerations on this. Uh, causes and treatment. Causes are glomerular sclerosis or hardening, chronic systemic arterial hypertension, polycystic kidney disease, glomerular nephritis, and, and so on. Uh, treatment, lifelong kidney dialysis or kidney transplant would be the treatment. There's a couple different types of dialysis too. I want to talk about those here. Uh, one of them being peritoneal dialysis. Peritoneal dialysis uses the patient's peritoneal membrane as a semi-permeable membrane for filtration. So essentially what we get is they'll mix diacylate into there and then the peritoneal cavity will pull the toxins into the peritoneal fluid and they'll drain it the next day. It generally takes an overnight process. Um, complications of peritoneal dialysis, a risk of infection, depressed immune system, septicemia and septic shock. Hemodialysis and hemodialysis access. Uh, hemodialysis, blood is removed from the body and run through a machine that filters the blood, adds minerals and waters, and then returns purified and fortified blood in the patient's body. And this uses diacylate as well. Only the diacylate is filtered through an artificial semipermeable membrane. <laughs> hemodialysis access, continuous access of the large volumes of the patient's blood during the process it requires, means to obtain that type of access via venous catheter. And, and then we're going to talk about two of them here, which is an arterial venous fistula and then an AV graft. Uh, Post-dialysis complications on this, 
disequil disequilibrium syndrome, central nervous system disorder that is thought to be due to cerebral edema. Um, symptom pattern, headache, nausea, confusion, blurred vision, and estrixix, which is tremors of the hand when extended. Uh, kidney transplant, life extending procedure that offers the patients with uh, end stage renal disease, the best hope of improving the quality of life. Um, sources of this would be from living donors who are willing to give up a kidney or from uh, donors in general. And this is figure 21.3. This is peritoneal dialysis. So this right here is a diacylate and it's generally run in which gives them a full feeling into their peritoneal cavity and then their peritoneal cavity acts as a semipermeable membrane. And this is a hemodialysis machine. Again with diacylate, semipermeable membrane. Only this one's artificial. History. Uh, considerations, primary survey, we should always do a mental status. Uh, reports of altered mental status such as lethargy, agitation, or confusion should be seen as possible signs of uremia. A behavioral history may indicate a change that is suggestive of delirium. Tingling in the extremities may be an indication of peripheral nervous system involvement. Uh, urine history, uh, downward trend in urine output leading to oliguria or decreased urinary output is also suggestive of progressive deterioration of kidney function. Sudden cessation of urine output, or anuria, would lead to the suspicion of occlusion, maybe even a kidney stone. Medical record and past medical history, if they've had any recent nosebleeds, bloody stools, or tendency to bruise easily, if they're taking any kind of new medications, if they have chronic hypertension, diabetes, or a history of heart failure, or anorexia, or, or if it's occupational related, someone that is it works in heavy metals like lead and, and things like mercury and things like that. On examination, azotemia, accumulation of nitrogenous waste products, uh, gives us some s several different things here. One of them being yellowed skin caused by keratins in the skin, condition called the keratin oderma, uh, the breath, ammonia, and other aromatics that off gas into the exhaled air cause uh, the breath to be foul, fishy odor, uremic frost, small droplets of urine collected on the face and facial hair around the mouth, blood pressure without diuresis, uh, blood volume begins to increase which stretches the cardiovascular system, signs of heart failure, pulmonary edema, edema jugular venous distension, hepatic jugular reflex, abdominal distension with tenderness, peripheral edema, hematuria due to in part by hematological disorders secondary to kidney failure. So all of these on examination may be found. The more of these symptoms that you actually have, the easier it is to say that this person is in is probably in acute renal failure. Uh, assessment, uremia, syndrome caused by the loss of kidney function as an excitatory and endocrine gland. Uh, untreated can eventually lead to congestive heart failure, electrolyte derangements, and an acid base imbalance. That's primarily the electrolytes is going to be potassium. Uh, treatment, paramedic treatment of uremia, largely supportive, focuses on treating the signs and symptoms. If we have heart failure, treat the heart failure. If there's electrolyte abnormalities that we can spot, treat the electrolyte abnormalities. Or if they're in an acid base imbalance, treat the acid base imbalance. Venous access considerations. There's always a concern over assessing the venous sites reserved for hemodialysis. Could result in an infection or thrombosis and lose their lifeline. Uh, devices are still typically placed. Uh, paramedic access. In some EMS systems, paramedics are only permitted to access the AV fistulas or the AV grafts during life and death emergencies. And on this, we should follow our local protocols. Whenever we're looking at the graft, it should have a thrill in it. AV grafts and fistulas have a noticeable prolonged pulsation. And then a bruit, a uh, sound of turbulent blood flow, which sounds like a low-pitched swooshing whooshing in the area uh, as the blood passes through the device. Selection of the IV catheter uh, based upon either a visual or tactical, tactile inspection, we feel it, 
uh, site preparation, the site should be cleansed thoroughly as to prevent contamination and later infection. Upon evaluation, we should evaluate the patient on first considerations, hyperkalemia, most common life-threatening emergency for a patient with uremia, effects of increased potassium, myocardial cells become hyperexcitable, sodium channels start to become congested, cardiac conduction system undergoes conduction errors, the QRS starts to flatten, and, then, and this will just widen out, essentially, their QRS. Treatment of suspected hyperkalemia. Uh, competitive electrolytes, such as calcium chloride or calcium gluconate, and what those do is they allow the myocardial tissue to function in a hyperkalemic environment. They administer sodium bicarbonate, co-administering of 100 milliliters of 50% dextrose with 10 units of regular insulin also, and that's through facilitated diffusion, pull the potassium back in the cell. Use of beta agonists also, such as albuterol, either a small volume nebulizer or a meter dose inhaler can also be effective in this. The increased beta responses from the muscle tissue uh, assist the potassium back inside the cell even more. Disposition, considerations, the patient with uremia, transport them immediately, monitor throughout the trip for signs of heart failure, hyperkalemia, and prevent further fluid overload. Early treatment of acute coronary syndrome, or ACS, uh, early treatment of uremia as well. In conclusion, the role of the kidneys are to maintain the bodily fluids, electrolyte, and blood pressure balance of the body. Disorders to the renal function range from infection to renal failure. The renal system's pathophysiology knowledge will help you evaluate and treat the patient appropriately. If you have any questions concerning this topic, my name is Rory Smith. Smith Art, SamaritanEMSOK.com or 405-492-8243. Thank you.